Hey guys, Chris Dick here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, some client coding, client side coding techniques. And we're still working with our student objects. In the last video we did, uh, we used Entity Framework to show some one-to-many -many relationships with our uh, addresses. So today we're going to be using uh, jQuery and uh, we're going to be creating a simple API in our addresses controllers to get the uh, addresses that are related to a student. So from here, what we have to do is uh, we have to add a controller to get started. <clears throat> Using this client side coding can take a little bit of time uh, to set up, but once you're set up, it's not that bad. Uh, so we click on add and then we go to controller. And from this point, we're going to be adding an address controller. And it's our, just the same as we did with our student uh, controller. We simply click a uh, entity framework view uh, with views. And then that'll create our uh, cre create, edit, uh, delete functions as well. And also give us an index page. So from here in the model class, we're going to select uh, addresses. You'll notice that, or address uh, model, uh, you'll notice that from, uh, from the controller name, it gives us a name of addresses, which is the plural. All the controllers are related to the plural form, uh, not the one form. You can certainly name it that, but it won't make sense to do that. So we click on add, and that'll take a little bit of time sometimes to get started. So um, we'll just wait for it to get uh, ready. Okay, so our address controller is ready. Uh, you'll notice that it looks fairly similar to the student controller in that it's got index, details, create, edit, all the rest. We have our DB context, its name is DB up here. And uh, I generally like to put a lot of my uh, API calls down to the very bottom here. All right, so I'm gonna add it right here above the dispose method. Now, we're going to be working with JSON. Uh, you can also work with uh, XML results, if you like, uh, that will be in another video. So for this one, we're going to be creating a public method. It will return a JSON result. Uh, its name will be get. And we're going to uh, create a nullable uh, int object. So this is going to be relating to the student ID. Okay, and just to be descript, right? You could just say ID if you like, but I'm just being a little bit more descript. Okay, similar to what you see up here. All right, and we're using nullable because um, there may be cases where you just want to get all of the addresses. So perhaps you may add some functionality later on that uh, allows for all of the addresses to, to be gathered. Now we're going to be uh, working with our database that will be return a list of uh, address objects. So from here, I'm going to create an I enumerable that um, uses uh, address objects. Okay, I'm going to call it items because I'm returning more than one item, and I'm going to create a type of an I enumerable called a list. And this will be a list of addresses. Okay. And uh, on our return, remember, I, I usually, when I'm developing, I like to close off everything so that I uh, sort of top to bottom. That way, every time I do something, I'm always, uh, I don't have to clean up at the end or I haven't forgotten most, but it doesn't always work. So it's uh, pretty close. So from here, uh, we're going to be returning JSON. Okay, that's the result that we're returning, and we're turning our items. Let's spell that right. Okay, and it's a JSON behavior or request behavior, and we're going to be uh, allowing get. Okay, now our get, just because uh, we're actually using this to get information, and that's all. Um, you have to allow the controller to actually uh, give you that request ability. So here we're going to say that if student ID dot has value, so we're going to ask, does it have a value? If it has a value, we're going to use it. So we're going to query that information. So do uh, items um, equals DB, that's our data context, uh, addresses 
dot where. Okay. Um, S dot S student ID equals is a double equal sign because we're comparing. Okay. Student ID dot value. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to give us uh, the all of the addresses where student equals student ID. Okay. Now what you'll have to think about here and this is a problem that often happens here when you're when you start working with uh, JSON and XML uh, if you recall a lot of the details that we get uh, have related objects that means that an address will have a student right and uh, in some cases you may have many results so if I put, bring up a student object um, entity framework will naturally use lazy loading which will uh, say here's a by the way here's a list of uh, addresses that are related to the student as well so <clears throat> if I have a list of addresses then I also have a student that is attached to that uh, that address then I have another list of addresses within that student and it just creates something called a circular reference so what we're going to do is turn off that ability to have circular references the first step in doing that is we have to modify the con the configuration while we're doing this and we're going to turn off proxy uh, creation okay that way um, we will have to request the information if we actually need it uh, so that will be one step the next thing is we have to do um, as no tracking so in other words it's not going to load that student unless we specifically request that student to be loaded okay now one more thing we have to add in uh, add in a uh, part or a description to our address and I'm just going to do this here it is called script ignore okay now you'll see that it's got a red underline we could press control period on that red underline it pops down this box here that says uh, we want to uh, add this uh, system.web.script serialization and we say yes we want to add that all right so now when it goes to create the student object it's going to look th at this if we're calling from script it's going to say oh I don't need to create that just ignore it now okay all right so the next stage is we want to test our, our uh, JSON and make sure it actually worked um, this uh, is a fairly simple process but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go through it we'll get into the addresses controller and uh, actually display that okay our page is up now um, we're going to just type in here we don't have access to our addresses yet and I've already used uh, used a call to this get method so we're going to try and call it right now it'll pull up and what it'll bring out is our um, list of addresses in JSON format okay you'll see uh, there is six addresses related to this student okay uh, yeah, yeah, there's six there. Sorry, I just wanted to double check. I thought I saw seven, but it's not. Okay, now the next step that we need to do is actually add the functionality to our uh, student page. And what we have to do on, uh, on this uh, page here is we need to add, uh, ensure that we are in the proper section where we can use our jQuery. And I'll just explain that to you. If I go into the shared layout and go to the very bottom here, uh, our jQuery and Bootstrap uh, gets rendered uh, at the very bottom. Now this is just so that it saves the, so that it renders the top part of the page first and then takes a little bit of time to load the rest of it. We have a section called scripts and that's where we're going to be adding most of our code. So if we're going to go over to our details page now and we type simply at scripts at section scripts that is okay and I bring that down like this and we can start adding in any of the scripts that we want to do so here 
We're going to do uh, a JavaScript, so it's text, JavaScript, okay. And from here, we start doing some jQuery, all right. So this jQuery is um, very simply going to be asking for a function, and we're going to do on the document ready, we are... Uh, going to, sorry folks, there we go. We're going to be uh, starting off with what things we're going to do within the document ready function. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, is perform a get and this get asks for a URL and then another function. Okay, this function um, you need to be sending, uh, or you need to, you'll be receiving the data and the status of the function. Okay. And once again, I try to try to sort of close everything um, at the same time. All right. Now we have uh, a URL that we're going to be calling, so we're going to build that URL right now. Okay, URL and put some quotes there. Now we're going to use uh, a little bit of the uh, C sharp here to ask for the URL. You could just type the URL out uh, just just the same way. It's uh, there's no uh, no problem with doing that. Okay. Our our action here requires uh, there our URL action will actually build the uh, full URL string for us and then we're not having to worry about slashes or spelling errors. So here we are asking for the get action. Then we are asking we are asking for the controller name. And if you recall, we are in the uh, students controller. So we have to actually specify which controller to ask for the information. Uh, this here is our routing route values. That's what I'm going to be putting in right now. If you recall, we had student ID as our parameter and we're going to send in a student ID from our uh, model that's coming in okay so now we have a full fully built uh, URL now the next thing thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to build some output uh, that will be uh, output to our uh, to an area of our page so this here this area, I'm going to comment this out, and I'm going to build another another function here. So here we are very simply. Actually, you know what? I can. I'm going to do this here. Let's take that out for a moment. We're going to just comment out this area, okay? And I'm going to give this this UL an ID. We're going to call it addresses. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is setting the inner HTML of the UL. So we're going to obviously be building some U some LI tags coming through this. So from this point, I'm going to use a, a for each method for uh, processing our data. Okay, and our um, our function in the for each. Uh, has an index and uh, the item so it's like uh, you have an iterator and an object that you can you can work with so in this case we're going to be having uh, address objects that come through so we're going to be working with those objects all right now we should in fact at this point uh, create a variable that was an, that is empty and then at the end, we're going to be supplying addresses with the inner HTML of output. Remember, I'm always trying to do the top and bottom, start and finish of things, and then get started on the middle after that. So from this point, we, uh, we start building our output. So we're uh, concatenating strings every time. The first thing is... Uh, we want to append the open li tag. Now 
naturally that means we have an, a closing Li tag. Okay, the next stage is we start adding in all the pieces of our, uh, our item. So I'm going to go over to our addresses model and just find out our full names of things. So we're going to copy the street number like that. Okay. I'm going to copy a bunch of them down here. That way I don't have to do it again. Our street name. city I prefer to copy paste things because uh, all too often we will make a mistake as we're uh, typing something out and then especially in scripting you'll s spend all your time uh, struggling to find out where th something went wrong and usually it's just a spelling error okay good all right now what we've got here is just a, a list, and the way this looks like is, is just going to return a bunch of, uh, a jumbled bunch of uh, text. So we're going to just append some uh, delimiters here. So here is this one, here is a space. This one will be separated by a comma. Another comma, same thing, comma, comma, and nothing at the end. So we should be all right there. Okay, I think we are pretty much ready to go, if I'm right. So we'll play this. Okay, we'll refresh this page here. This is our, our details page that we had done up before. And if all went well, it should look exactly the same as the uh, Entity Framework page. Okay, we'll refresh this now, and there we have it. Now what you'll see is uh, with the Entity Framework, it loaded very quickly, and with the jQuery, it opened the page, and then, f then finally requested the data, and then displayed the data. So what you'll notice the difference is that you're going to get a, a fast uh, full page display and then the related object will uh, will display uh, as it gathers the information. So once again, you're, you know, it's a toss-up between what you decide is important to you. Uh, sometimes it's just not, uh, you know, it's more important to display the page faster so that people believe that, okay, this is, this, there's some, not something wrong with the page. Um, and uh, it just sort of adds a little bit of credibility in some points. And then, of course, working with an API is a better way to go uh, as you start to move your site out to mobile applications and, uh, and other types of applications. That way it's disconnected from a data source, and it's, uh, that's a very important point. Okay, guys, that's it for this lesson. Uh, thanks very much, and remember to like and share, and uh, please subscribe to my videos. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.